was having an issue losing prime on the fuel pump. So I decided to pull it off and I want to show you exactly how this fuel pump works and what was wrong with this thing. Okay, here's my fuel pump. This is vacuum operated and it's actually a really simple system. It's a sealed container and what happens is you put vacuum on here. Now the reason there's a vacuum running in and one running back out is because it runs in here and then it runs out to the windshield wipers. But basically what you got is it's, you can see it's vented to the atmosphere. But when the fuel level gets up, and the reason it's vented is if it was contained, you know, it would have to have pressure to push into it. Because you're filling up an area with gas and you're taking air out. So the air has to have somewhere to go. So we've got two needles and seats, I guess is what you could call them. Okay, you've got one to give it atmospheric, so it, so you know it can fill up, and then you've got one that actually goes to the vacuum. So what happens is when when you create vacuum in this tank and it pulls fuel in through this hole from the tank, it goes and it fills it up, and once it fills it up, this float comes up, and this looks to be stainless, but when this float comes up, it actually will come all the way up and cut your cut your vacuum off, and then it would cut the uh, the atmosphere off and you can uh, you'd be good to go now uh, it seems to work really well and the problem with this one I you know you hear that story about the uh, you know something getting in your gas tank and, and sometimes it would cover up the inlet and sometimes it wouldn't and that's what this thing was acting like it would pump sometimes sometimes it wouldn't and this is all from inside this tank and it I don't know, it, it almost looks like rust, but it's like a paint. And I don't know, I guess it all came from here. So what was happening was, was this stuff was all going down and covering the bottom hole. And sometimes it would break up and come out and go in this filter, or that filter I've got on it. And sometimes it would uh, just not let any fuel come out, you know. And, and once it floated away or got moved enough, it would let some fuel come out. So it was just, it was being erratic. It wasn't being... Uh, consistent so I decided to take it apart and that's what I found and uh, also this is our gasket at the top you can see it's, it's eight away now this from what I can understand what I've seen on, on pictures this should have been a cork gasket to start with it should, should have never been a rubber gasket so I didn't like the way it was cracked all around it so I was wanting to change it anyway but that's what I found and where the gasket goes on is actually that black right there inside that is from that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up and put this back down in here I'm going to sh it's shut off now but with it shut off I'm going to fill this whole thing full of that uh that metal rescue and let it sit and let it eat all the rust out of the inside from where this thing been sitting get it really good and clean and then we'll uh we'll get it back together we'll make us a new cork gasket and uh let me see this does not have rubber on it don't think. It's a hard plastic, so bake light probably, so it shouldn't hurt that. I think we'll be okay. Uh, metal rescue, and then this, uh, everything here is in pretty good shape. This needs cleaned up. So I think it should work out just fine if I get it good and clean. But that was our issue here that I was having uh, with the running. So we'll get this taken care of and uh, get her back together. Okay, we got it filled to the top. I just got it sitting down an old rim so it'll stay level, but we'll let that sit and uh, see if it uh, takes care of things. Okay, folks, uh, we got it all cleaned up. Cleaned up really nice inside. I don't know if you can see it or not. No more rust. No more rust on here. A little bit pitted, but it's not going to hurt a thing. Everything's good and clean. Uh, just about got the gasket finished here. We're getting ready to put it back together. Okay, folks, I have uh, got the tires on. Got the fuel pump taken care of, uh, working really well. Uh, like I said, I put a cork gasket on it this time, and it actually primed up really quick, works good. I'm gonna take the carburetor apart one more time, and I'm gonna do something about that fuel, the glass fuel filter on it. I uh, wanna clean that carburetor out, because anything that was in that that tank, I didn't, you know, I don't wanna take any chances on it being in there and getting on the needle, and so I wanna just clean the system out. So, uh, that'll be it, but the, the fuel pump's working great. And uh, tires come out really good. Uh, I like it. I like the way they look. Uh, 
I've got to wash this one again because I, I washed the blue off and then I went down the road and anything that was, you know, the, the oil or actually I used some little spray to get to put the tires on and, you know, blowed out a little bit, got some lines on the tires, but I'll get that cleaned up. Uh, I know it's going to be a lot of maintenance cleaning them up, but, you know, I'm not going to be taking this out that often anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, show you the spare. I just put one of the tires on the uh, that rusty rim, stuck it on there, cleaned it up a little bit. Don't look too bad. I mean, it's just, you know, it's fine for now. Uh, it's definitely too close, too close for me. It's about a half inch, so we're gonna we're gonna eventually shorten this up some. Uh, we'll cut it back where they welded it back together and shorten it. It won't be a big big issue, and uh, make it look a little better anyway. And uh, it's coming coming along. It took me. Almost, well, over three days to put four tires on, and the reason it took that long is because I just didn't have time. I've been towing so much. The last weekend, the plans was to work on the drag car. That didn't work out really well because me and Noah, or Noah and I, ended up down at uh, Jordan's place helping him on the on his house the whole weekend. So uh, I didn't really get anything done on the drag car like I wanted, or get you know, much done anyway. So uh, this weekend, I've got to put a rear end and. Uh, one of my rollbacks, the uh, the four door top kick. I knew it was an issue because I could hear it when I got it. Now it's not out or not bad or nothing like that, but uh, I don't want to take a chance on being out on the road. So you know I've got the parts trucks I bought. One of them trucks I'm gonna fix, but the other ones are for parts. So I've got extra rear ends. So we're gonna get one in it, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not. I do have an emblem on the front, and. Uh, Instead of costing the $255, which is what the, the emblem from Argentina was going to cost me, this particular emblem here cost me 18 bucks. And the reason being is Cyanide Tube, which I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, he took, he went to that ad that I had shown for the one in Argentina, and the guy just happened to lay a tape measure on it, and you could see that it was five mil or five centimeters by eight centimeters or some, you know, right around there. So he did the CAD program, and and I'm not sure how all that works, but anyway, he done the soft, done the, wrote the program, and he uploaded it to a site here in the uh, United States, and they actually uh, printed this for me, 3D plastic printing, and so I just painted it up and stuck it on there. It's you know it's not perfect because not because of his design, he designed it to a T exactly like it's supposed to be. It's not perfect because I'm not the best painter in the world when it comes to little stuff like that. And uh, I actually went ahead and ordered, I'm going to show you the other one and what it looked like when I got it. Kind of hard to see the details, but, uh, but you know, they're definitely all there. And I'm going to put a link in the description uh, of Cyanide Tube. I want you to everybody check him out because he does some, some really, really intricate work and, and builds a... Uh, remote control cars but he actually builds the entire car he don't you know he actually builds the frames and the bodies and uses old parts like you know I do on a bigger car he'll use he'll use an old toaster and take parts off of it and make a body and I mean it's just some of the work he does is really amazing so a uh, really good guy and I really do appreciate him doing this for me and uh, didn't charge me a dime and I you know I really needed that because I didn't really want to spend the money I uh, wasn't able to buy, you know, I didn't buy five tires because I didn't want to spend the money on that. Uh, so I've just got four. One day, maybe, you know, when I get get to where I can, I'll buy one for the back. And uh, that way we'll have five white walls instead of four. Uh, uh, let me see. I'm, I'm basically, besides taking that carburetor down and cleaning it, I'm basically through on this for a while. Uh, it's ready enough for me to go to the, to the show I'm going to go to. Uh, I did go ahead and put the... I'd actually done this this evening. I put the running board mats on and put the trim around it and, you know, just uh, to cover up that the wood that was there. The wood was in good shape. It just didn't look that good. So, uh, you know, I know the paint's terrible and, you know, there's no interior and wood, but, you know, I, I, I've got it as far as I want it for the time being. This was the plan was to get it to where I can just, you know, take it to the show. And, and uh, I've got a lot of friends there. I've got a lot. Of, there's a lot of cars there that I actually... Uh, if I didn't build them, I worked on them or, or done, you know, something to them. So, you know, I figured I would, uh, I wanted to go to it. And 
don't have any really plans to go to any of the other ones, but definitely got plans to go to it. So, uh, anyway, check out Sinai 2 and see some of his work, but I really appreciate that. Like I said, I'm going to put a link to the, to the website, and I can't think of the name of it now. But anyway, where, this, where he posted this, and you'll get to see, you know, what I seen when I clicked on it and went to it and... Uh, I was able to, like I said, buy it. I think $18 and some change, or I think that's what it was, maybe 19 bucks total. But, it, you know, it was cheap. It's so cheap I bought two, and I figured I'd use this one for a casting mold, and possibly we can cast it later. And uh, that one, I did do some checking online to see, make sure that paint was going to hold on this stuff, and it does. Uh, use self-etching primer first, and that's what I've done. So, I like it. I mean, you know, somebody that... You know, unless they're really looking real hard, they're never going to know that it's not a, an original emblem. And that'll keep people from having to ask me every, you know, two seconds what uh, what kind of car it is. Uh, they still may ask questions, but that'll cover that. But I think that's about it on this. And, uh, you know, I, I drove it down the road and back a few times, and, and it's doing just fine. That fuel pump's doing really good. And uh, so, and like I said, we'll end up getting a uh, white wall spare back here. And I'll either fix that rim or clean that rim up. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've got some different locks coming, too. I've got the the, the Hayes locks instead of the Jackson locks. And uh, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about a little bit. Uh, and, you know, everybody don't have to listen to this, but I was just going to talk about the uh, talk about the drunk passenger a little bit. Okay. A lot of you may have watched the, uh, the video with the, uh, the drunk passenger on it. And, uh, you know, I don't like getting in situations like that, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes you don't have a choice. And, you know, most of the, the comments I've seen said stuff about, you know, that I was uh, patient and all that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up, my, my dad was an alcoholic, so I grew up around that. So, uh, and, you know, I've been around it quite a bit. So I know how people are. And, and I'm sure some of you, you know, or, or probably just about everybody probably knows somebody that has either, you know, that's got a, a DWI or gotten drunk and, and drove. And the reason that I give drunks the benefit of the doubt, now don't get me wrong, I've actually had to fight quite a few drunks, but the honest truth is, is that, you know, a, a decent person will come here and talk to me and, you know, down to earth, you know, some of them go to church, really good, decent people that not only would they never drink and drive, they'd tell you they'd never drink and drive until they get drunk. And then they're liable to do anything. And that's what I'm trying to get at is I wasn't going to judge that guy by the way he was uh, drunk. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have known him as a sober person and, and then I could have... Uh, then if he was a, a, an a-hole, you know, I would have uh, done things a little bit different. But, you know, alcohol, you know, affects different people in different ways. And I try not to let that be the determining factor on a person because I, I've had people that I've went to the wreck or went to the DWI checkpoint or whatever, you know, the wreck and, and picked their car up and seen the way they was acting and stuff. And then when they come to pick the car up, they, uh, they're a different person, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not the same, it's not the same, and people just act different when they're drunk, and, you know, I, I wasn't going to judge that guy uh, the way that he was when he was drunk, and the reason how I patrol didn't do anything with him is because he wasn't breaking any laws, uh, he was sitting in a car drunk, and, you know, at least he wasn't driving, I mean, you know, things could have been worse. So I try to give him the benefit of the doubt that, that, you know, he might be a decent person. Now, the rest of the story, uh, the cousin was the one that was driving. And I, didn't, I didn't know that until he'd come here. They actually picked the vehicle up. But they picked the vehicle up because the vehicle wasn't theirs. It was a family member girl. And, you know, I don't know whether it was a sister or, you know, cousin or something. But uh, they did pick the vehicle up and pay the bill. And thank goodness. And I cut them a break on storage. And because I, you know, when it's an individual and not an insurance company, I, I usually, you know, give them a little bit of a break. And, uh,
but the uh, the thing was is he told me that he said you know I explained to him I said you know your cousin didn't want to give me an address to take him home and you know after he told me of course it was his cousin and uh, and he said, yeah, he said, you know, for some reason when he goes to drinking, he turns into a, an a-hole. And uh, he said he's really not that bad of a person. And then uh, he also told me that his cousin the next day, or later on that day, asked him how he got home. Because he did not remember me, he didn't remember the, uh, the police, the fire department, or anything. So, anyway, the, uh, so I just, I, I don't judge people like that. I mean, I'd rather not. And, uh. Because you never know, you know, he could he could have been a, a stand-up, decent person that just got drunk, and you know, alcohol, you know, messes with a lot of people in different ways. And you know, I, I've seen depressive drunks, I've seen drunks that want to fight, I, you know, I've seen it all. So, anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, hopefully we won't have to do any more videos like that. But if we do, we do. Bye.